Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another, um, let's call it a What's Up with DCS video. Uh, I've made, I guess, uh, maybe three of these, and uh, there weren't videos that I originally thought I was going to make very many of, but they do seem to have gotten some attention, so I guess I might as well continue doing it. To be clear, though, I'm not trying to sort of make uh, these a repetition of the um, uh, discussions around the commentariat. Um, I think when I can provide a unique perspective, I think I'd like to provide it, and see um, what all of you think of it. Now, in, since the new year, I have kind of got to thinking about DCS, and there's obviously a lot of commentary out there about where DCS is going and when it's likely to arrive. Um, and the thing is, though, that a lot of those opinions I find are you know, really pretty kind of anecdotal. Um, they're just based on, on a, a single single incident, or maybe they're based on uh, an interpretation of what ED is actually saying in their marketing material, which may or may not be reflective of uh, forecasted reality. Um, or often, I mean, they're just based on rumor and supposition. So, so none of that's very satisfying in terms of trying to figure out where this, uh, where this uh, express is really headed. So um, I decided maybe I'd try a more uh, data-based approach um, to see if I could kind of figure out if there's any anything in what DCS says that may actually give some clues to where it's going. As opposed to what its messages are, um, taking a look at actually what it's doing. Um, and to do this, I, I, you know, I started thinking about this after the last release because, as is typical, the last patch came out with many, many pages of release notes, which is what's happened in every release, and there have been several. Uh, I've been 20 uh, over the course of the last uh, year. I mean, they come out about once every two weeks, certainly once a month. And because there's so much, uh, so many bullet points in each of the release notes, when you put them all together, it's a little bit hard to um, see the forest for the trees, as it were. So I decided maybe I'd try an experiment. I, I ran the last year of release notes uh, through a couple of AI chatbots uh, and asked the AI to summarize the whole mass of points for me. And um, the results were kind of interesting, um, which is why I got to thinking about making this video. And, and actually, in some ways, although I have to say I'm not really happy about what they tell me, they do kind of make sense. So, um, when the chatbots got through with it and I kind of compared across the multiple ones, um, I found that the first thing that came up was that there were a lot of changes that seemed to be at improving, let's call it the overall appearance of the game and the performance of the game uh, at the same time. Um, and often these changes featured words like immersion uh, and environment and atmosphere. There were also a lot of changes that were, uh, or at least seemed to be at, aimed at improving the user interface, particularly if you include uh, the new launcher, uh, multiplayer changes and um, improvements to the mission editor, which I think are all basically in the category of improving the UI. Um, there was also a lot of new content in terms of, let's call it the re-release of the uh, Flaming Cliffs 3 aircraft, including the uh, update of the F5E that came out in the fall, and that seemed to get a lot of attention in the various releases. The other modules that came up most often over the course of the year were the F-16, the F-18, the Apache, and the Hind, which I will point out all are ED modules, so that, that does make sense, but I think there's a pattern in there too. And then, of course, discussion of uh, the new maps as they were released uh, and before they released took up a lot of bandwidth in the patch notes as well. Uh, and there were also a fair bit of the updates that were aimed at fixing bugs, which is which is fair. It's a little harder to see the pattern of what you know what pattern of the bugs that were made a priority. Uh, I mean, it's obviously true that Eagle Dynamics worked hard at fixing uh, you know urgent bugs, ones that caused caused crashes to desktop. Um, and you know they generated hot fixes um, when a release broke something uh, fairly serious. Uh, beyond that, I would say, though, that there did seem to be a focus in fixing bugs on what I would call playability bugs, by which I mean issues that were really preventing players from playing the game at all, especially that were preventing them from playing it in multiplayer. And in particular, there also seemed to be a concern, this is maybe my bias, but there seemed to be a concern to fix bugs altitude, that were relevant altitude. to multiplayer, and also air-to-air -air combat in particular. Um, the great spotting dot debate uh, probably falls into this category, for instance. 
Um, and then the other category of bugs that seemed to get a lot of notice um, were bugs that were specifically related to ED modules like the ones I talked about above, the F-16, the F-18, the Apache, and the Hein. Okay, so that, that was the pattern that AI managed to pull out of the however many uh, tens of thousands of words of release notes that uh, uh, ED uh, produced in the last year. What, is, uh, what does that say to me about where DCS is going? And, you know, is it useful? And, and I decided to make the video because I think it does say something about DCS's, um, ED's overall priorities. Um, you know, the ones that they are working to, as opposed to the ones that they put in their public announcements, for instance, you know, taken together, what that list of, of um, features that were, you know, central to the release notes, central to the evolution of the of the uh, application over the last year, when you take those together, it says to me that DCS is focused on a strategy that does, well, really two things. First of all, it seems to me that Eagle Dynamics is trying to make the game more attractive and more accessible to new players and in particular to new players that are very interested in an online multiplayer experience. If you think about it, a lot of the improvements are very much directed at this audience because ED seems to want to make DCS a game that, you know, meets a minimum standard of graphics quality um, in the modern world uh, and at the same time retains uh, playability at those graphics settings so that uh, new players who are not uh, sim nerds uh, can get into the cockpit relatively easily. Uh, ED is assuming that these same players probably want to play with their friends online, and they don't really want to spend a lot of time having to get uh, under the hood to be able to play the game. In other words, they don't want to make their own missions um, or even necessarily uh, know how that's done. They want to show up and they want to have, um, they basically want to play something that's ready to play and they want to play it with their friends. So essentially, Eagle Dynamics then is trying to attract a player that boots up, logs into a server, meets with some buddies there, and goes hunting for opportunities to uh, flex their air combat muscles. So they have focused on making a game that will, A, not be disappointing in terms of the quality of the graphics for people who are used to playing high-end, uh, you know, AAA titles with high-end graphics, and which will also be able to handle those graphics uh, you know, with a fairly standard gaming rig. So they have worked on improving the performance of the software as well. They have also improved the aircraft that are available at a price point that is accessible to the new players. And that's what the re-release of all the Flaming Cliffs 3 uh, planes basically improved the look and feel, uh, well, at least the look of those aircraft. And those are the ones that would be aimed at the audience that I'm talking about. Because also notice that notably almost all of the uh, FC-3 aircraft are ones that don't require a significant investment in a control setup in order to be able to fly them. Um, which is one thing that a lot of players note, is that uh, the investment in a decent control setup to fly a full fidelity module can be worth a lot more than the module itself by a long stretch. So ED strategy I think kind of starts to make sense when you look at it this way. I mean to grow the user base, DCS needs to appeal to an audience from outside the core flight sim niche uh, and they seem to have some ideas about uh, where that market is and how they can reach it. <clears throat> now I would say that the longer term focus or rather the the focus for longer term players uh, for ED is uh, modern air combat and by this I mean Eagle Dynamics seems to be quite serious about simulating air combat from say the first couple of decades of uh, this millennium I say this because their initial development efforts seem to be focused on, really, the two mainstays uh, of modern fighter combat, at least from the blue side, um, obviously the F-16 and the F-18. Now, they're also working quite hard to roll out the most modern weapons uh, and systems for these aircraft, and they're putting a lot of time also uh, into the Apache, which is another airframe that features pretty consistently in the conflicts of the last 20 years. So they're, they're working on modern fighters with modern uh, weapon systems and modern avionics. Really, they're not uh, trying to simulate anything much older than 2000. And they're also putting a focus on generating real locations in which those conflicts have taken place, namely Israel, Syria, and now Iraq and Afghanistan. So again, this kind of actually makes sense to me for a couple of reasons. 
First of all, that's a time period where DCS will be alone in the market. No one else can claim to simulate modern air combat in this era at all. Secondly, it's also likely an era that many of the new players that ED is interested in trying to attract will also find appealing if they decide to take the plunge uh, into the high fidelity side of things once they've gotten used to the simulation. Since that demographic is likely to trend, well, younger, quite a bit younger than me, anyways, these are going to be the um, wars they grew up with, uh, and the planes and helicopters that they are used to seeing on social media and in the news. So um, it makes sense to me that if what ED is trying to do is attract uh, people from outside the course in community to give them an experience that corresponds well with other games that they might play and that's reasonably accessible and which provides them with subject matter that they would be interested in continuing to get to know better by embarking on uh, upgrading to the high fidelity simulation. That, that actually does not seem like um, an incoherent strategy. Anyways, now again, I have to emphasize, I have absolutely no insight into the mind of Eagle Dynamics, uh, so I don't know if this is totally off base. I may be completely wrong. But this at least feels to me like a coherent plan. Now, it is not exactly the messaging that Eagle Dynamics produces, by the way. But as I talked about in a previous video, this messaging is not necessarily aimed at explaining their actual strategy and intentions. Their messaging is aimed at securing the support of players who are prepared to be supportive and in providing fodder for the influencers who are, who are supportive so they can carry that message to their communities. This is not wrong. This is not dishonest. It is honestly just good business. Now, that does not mean, by the way, that I welcome the approach that ED is taking, um, the strategy that they appear to be implementing. I don't, uh, mostly for the simple reason that I'm about as far from the demographic that they're targeting as it's possible to get. I don't play online. I'm quite a bit older, and I am definitely part of the sim nerd community. Now, also, the era and the weapons that they seem to be focused on are not the ones that are really interesting to me very much at all. So given that, given that DCS really doesn't seem to be developing in a direction that I would like it to, am I annoyed? Am I overflowing with righteous indignation that Eagle Dynamics is ignoring the wishes of a good customer who has spent uncounted dollars on their products and on my setup? No, I'm not. Because, you know, that would be silly. ED is not responsible for my decisions on what I spend my money on. I am. ED did not enter into some kind of contractual arrangement obligating them to make me happy or to consider my wants and needs as paramount to anyone else's, including their own need to run a profitable business. That would be silly. Typical. If I got upset about that, maybe. Typical. But it would still be silly. I'm disappointed that DCS is not likely to develop in the direction that's most interesting or amenable to me. I mean, I think it's a missed opportunity because you know, at least for me, the whole late Vietnam, Arab-Israeli wars, Cold War era just has a lot more potential in terms of the variety of aircraft and weapon systems and tactics than the last two decades of air combat do. I just think it's more interesting. But in a way, that's probably partly why it's actually not as attractive to Eagle Dynamics, because I think Eagle Dynamics wants to develop and serve a core market that comes to play regularly and that wants a consistent experience, one that they understand and one that corresponds to their recent experience in life. For that audience, the Cold War is ancient history and is just not as interesting to as many players in the market that ED judges to be most accessible. And that player base is a lot more diverse and wants a lot more different things and would essentially take more effort to serve. So <laughs> while I'm disappointed that Eagle Dynamics is not going to build the simulator of my dreams, I kind of find it hard to really find flaws in their logic, sadly. So, what's the net net of all of this? Well, uh, the bottom line is that there's at least some evidence that Eagle Dynamics could very well have a well thought out plan for where it's going, depending, despite the fact that it seems somewhat chaotic at times and they seem to be working on competing priorities, there may actually be. Um, a hidden hand under there somewhere that's uh, directing an actual coherent strategy. You know, what it means to me, uh, 
it's just expectation management on my part. Uh, I know that Eagle Dynamics uh, does not make it a priority or is not going to make it a priority to develop a lot of the functionality, a lot of the aircraft and a lot of the terrains that I would like to see. Uh, now I appreciate why. There may be good reason why they don't do that. Again, that's disappointing, but it's not a reason for me to get upset. And it also means that I'm not going to get upset when my expectations aren't met. I think there's good reasons why Eagle Dynamics is not trying to do that. So uh, while I may not be happy with where DCS goes, I'm certainly going to be happier playing the game for what it is and um, just not expecting it to go where I want it to go, at least not as quickly as it uh, is it probably as I would like it to. Anyways, that's going to do it for me. Those are my thoughts on the matter. If you have some constructive comments to add, uh, please feel free to do so. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. And this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.